Hi, I'm Dan Leonard in the East. And I'm George Whittem in the West. And together we are East West West Audio Audio Body Body Shop. Shop. Well, we've been checking our mail here at eWebs, and amazingly, we found out we've won millions in the Irish sweepstakes and lots of other places, too. Woo-hoo! Yeah, i get, got to stop checking the mail on that stuff. But we're not going to take any chances with our guest this week. We've got with us one of our favorite guys, America's voiceover sweetheart, John Taylor, will be here. We'll talk about his transition back to a radio career and just have lots of fun. John's one of our friends of the show. We love John so much, and we miss him. I'm going to talk about Lucy. We love Lucy. Lucy. Ha, Lucy. Ha, ha. L-U-C-I. It's a oh. new audio codec, at least kind of new to us. And uh, I'll demonstrate it on the show and see how it sounds and show you guys how it works and see what the upshot of the whole thing is. Sounds good. And in my tip of the week, we'll talk about room reflection. Some of you still don't understand that one. Echo, echo, echo. And I'll also have any questions you guys have sent in, as well as my tech update. That's East West Audio Body Shop, Sunday night, 9 o'clock in the East. And 6 o'clock in the West. And, of course, join us in the chat room. That's where all the fun is. We'll see you. He's the home voiceover studio engineer to the stars in Los Angeles, California. A Virginia tech grad whose knowledge of the latest recording gear is second to none. He's a voice actor and the home studio master, hailing from Buffalo, New York. His home studio skills and knowledge of voiceover recording is unmatched. When Dan and George talk shop, people listen, and the talk continues tonight. Welcome to East West Audio Body Shop. And now, live from his high-tech facility in Santa Monica and his penthouse studio in Buffalo, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Good evening, America, and Canada, and the Canary Islands, and whoever else is watching this show. I'm Dan Leonard in the East. And I'm George Whittem in the West. And together we are East West West Audio Audio Body Body Shop. Shop. Well, well, another week goes by. Finally, the weather's nice, unless, of course, you're in New Zealand, in which case it's probably the middle of winter there. Um, And there are people who watch the show in in New Zealand. I know that for a fact. Yes, I believe that is true. And the Canary Islands, and we know definitely in Spain, and we know, you know, in, in, they're in Israel, they're in, yeah, they're, we know they're in Turkey. Mm-hmm. Uh, we certainly know Turkey is there this week. Uh, but this show goes worldwide. If I ever would have thought in my radio days that I could actually go worldwide and do this sort of thing on the internet, you know, who knew? It's like ham but, radio, but, you know. Covering a much larger audience, yeah, and talking about more interesting stuff. I hope that's true. You need ham. That's, hey, that's who the true. hell is that? Yes. Oh, we have our special <laughs> guest with us tonight. <laughs> Joining us from where you're you're in Hyannis. We're 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 on Cape Cod. Are you? We call it a mixture of uh, Cape Cod and Hollywood. It's called Holly Cod. Holly Cod. <laughs> John Taylor, ladies and gentlemen, and whoever else is out weather watching. How you doing? I'm wonderful. I'm wonderful. Beautiful day on the Cape today. Yes, finally, after all that rain. You didn't get any of that. the, the remnants of that hurricane. Didn't turn into a nor'easter. We were moist. Moistened. Uh, <laughs> moist, yes. We were the moistest. <laughs> we yes. were the most moist. <laughs> yes. That word yeah, needs I to see. get into the weather parlance of the meteorologists more often. Moist. Yes, yes. I like I happen to be a fan of that word. They were pre-moistened. More than just <laughs> moist. You're soaking in it. That's right. <laughs> so anyway, John will be with us for the for the first hour of the show tonight because he has to get up early. What time do you get, get up, John? Uh, it depends. 3.30, 4 o'clock, something like that. Yeah. Hey, man, I, I remember doing morning show, and by 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I would start to hallucinate. You know, yeah. it was, I was, I was not, I, I'm, I'm not, a, I'm not a, a, you know, I can't go to bed early. So I would go to bed, you know, 1130 midnight and get up yeah. at three thirty four o'clock. It was bad. And it took me almost a year to really adjust to that. How long did it, it take you to get used to it? You never get used to it. And of course yeah. your hallucinations had to do with LSD flashbacks from the sixties. <laughs> Maybe My, not that far back, but close. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mine are from the 80s, which I don't remember. Yeah, those are far worse flashbacks. Yeah. Which, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, here I am. I'm on the show, and since I've got this uh, platform worldwide, I think I'll uh, do a few endorsements of products. Let me just get uh, Boy. 
Get my entertainer's secret, ladies and gentlemen. Entertainer's secret. Yes, it's the throat spray that soothes and protects. Entertainer's secret. And you know, if my entertainer's secrets fail, I can always switch over to my Grether's Pastilles. Yes, Grether's Pastilles are the best little pastilles money can buy. Yes, they're sweet and sugar-free Grether's Pastilles. And you know, if I start to stink up the booth by uh, perspiring too much, I like to have some of this Dove, Dove, yes, Dove uh, Ultra Ultimate Go Fresh. Yes, when I question my freshness, I like to... Put a little on my pit. Is that underarm or under leg deodorant? That's uh, underarm deodorant. Okay. What is that? Uh, key lime pie flavor? What is yeah, it? Yeah, no, actually, it's yeah, key lime pie. Uh, it's it's uh, cool essence. It's cool essence. Now, if that cool uh, essence failed fails, I can always spray a big cloud of this stuff and then walk right through it. It's Febreze, ladies and oh, yeah. gentlemen. We're brought to you by Febreze, and this scent eliminates odors and freshens. It's called Linen and Sky. Okay. And the sky here on Cape Cod doesn't have a scent, but in L.A. it does. So, yeah, that's the thing. They need to be more specific about what sky exactly they're referring to yeah, really. when it comes to yeah. scent. I don't Beijing. know, and it's at low tide. Not good <laughs> mm. So anyway, that's the uh, endorsement part of the thing. I've oh, made lovely. my money. Well, that's, thanks for the ideas for the new uh, sponsors. We'll uh, start working on that right away. Yeah, Actually, really. the pastilles are really good. Seriously, I don't get any money. I paid a lot of money for these things. You use there. them to lubricate your mouth uh, or freshen yes. or both? I, uh, b- they both freshen and lubricate. Grether's pastilles. We, we talk them. a lot about that. Actually, yeah. Or, yeah. Actually, uh, I, everybody talks about how they keep their mouths from clicking, or yeah, how the and, hell do they do it? These were actually um, I was turned onto these by Bob Bergen. Uh huh. Oh, dropped a name. <laughs> That's uh, going to happen whoops. a lot today. <laughs> and uh, the entertainer's secret is is more. It doesn't really freshen. It's more for sort of uh, sort of hydrating your throat because you go to the. It, it actually goes to the back. You kind of uh, 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 try to hit uh, the back of the throat with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. Maybe these things work. Maybe they don't. The good doctor probably has um, the word on that. But uh, if, it does make you feel a, a little better. Well, that's right. good. It has some homeopathic stuff in it, too. I understand. Yeah, I think it yeah. Is. Yeah. Some uppers. It's probably got some sort of... What does it say here? <laughs> uh, it's got... Uh, oh. Horny goat weed. No, it says it's got... Uh, <laughs> It says it's got glycerin, <laughs> and uh, it says it's got uh, potassium uh, sorbate and eleven herbs and spices. Yeah, sounds like ice. Rat <laughs> joy juice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll be running out to buy some of that right now. Yes, rat joy juice. I never heard of that. But anyway, um, anyway here we are. Hey, yes. should I should I show you guys uh, Lucy? Yes, let's, let's get started. Oh, you never come to the club when we re- are rehearsing, Lucy. Yeah, that's right, that's right. So what I thought, what is Lucy doing in the closet? <laughs> <laughs> this thing, Lucy, uh, you know, we all talk about, we talk about Source Connect a lot. Is it going to be the next big thing? And I think so far, that as most likely will be the mm-hmm. next big thing when it comes to broadcasting or, you know, connecting studios in real time with audio um, to take over the rotting corpse of ISDN, which I'm helping to drive a sword into whenever I get an opportunity. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you, my clients, they what you guys jump through to keep uh, ISDN connectivity, some of the people are paying north of $300 a month to keep their lines active now in wow. the Chicago area, I think especially. And, uh, and the hardware itself, um, one of my clients, uh, Michelle Ann Dumphy, just moved from Irvine to uh, the northwest. I, I think it's... Portland or Sa- uh, I can't remember Portlandish area. Anyway, and and now her uh, her um, Zephyr is dead or like pa- half dead. You know, it doesn't fire up, so she's gonna send mm. it to Telos and they'll charge her whatever they want to fix it. You know, it's it's crazy. So you know, we're looking for the next thing, and obviously Source Connect is a, is 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 the biggie. We talk about a lot for for obvious reasons. They've been around for the, the longest, I would say, and have had the most ex- you know experience in this voiceover realm. But they, they haven't yet uh, broached into the world of portable or true portable audio, which would be iPhones, smartphones, and, the, and the ilk, and that ilk. And uh, this company out of Europe has uh, got a head start. They're called Lucy, L-U-C-I dot E-U is the website. And so uh, what's cool about them is you can immediately download and start playing with the software without getting an iLock 
without playing around with any of that iLock stuff. Yeah. And uh, it runs on Windows XP, Windows Vista, Windows 7, Windows 8, Android phones and tablets, BlackBerry, <laughs> and iPhone, and Mac. So, I mean, it pretty much, this side of Linux, or Linux, depending on how you pronounce it, it runs on pretty much uh, everything. So, I thought I'd give it a shot. Well, it's cool. You download it and install it. It's very small. It's a very lightweight program. And um, it just it just works. So, I'll launch it right now. I'm going to change the screen share over so that you guys see my program instead of Dan and John. So, the first thing you see is activate license here. And... Uh, all you got to say is, I don't have a license yet. Let me demo. So what it's going to do is every um, 20 seconds, you'll hear a second of silence. So if that's the only thing it does to kind of cripple your session is it just inserts one second of silence every 20 seconds. Not so bad for something that uh, is a $350, $400 program. So I'll click demo here. So that brings me up to the actual uh, uh, application window. Let me resize my screenshot so we can see a little bit better here there we go so uh this is this is it this is the interface and the thing it's kind of neat is it looks exactly like this on android it looks exactly the same on an iphone it's the same thing no matter what um so first thing i'll do is i'll, I'll go to the tools menu in the, in the dock here and i go to select not, not not seeing it george yeah i'm not seeing it george oh it's because so i didn't just seeing you i didn't yeah, take, i didn't take too that, bad i didn't take that shot here we go sorry guys there we go. So, uh, got it now? You're freezing up there. We see something circling. You see something circling? Is this going to be another, another iPad disaster? <laughs> I don't think so. No freezing no, on this still, then. No, you're still there. Everything's frozen. I mean, everything's not frozen. So No, uh, no, you're, you're unfrozen. Okay. But do you see the... Uh, there you, now we see it. There it okay, is. Okay, so there's a long buffer tonight. Okay. Yes. Um, we are streaming in HD now, so that might be why there's a really long delay. Anyway, there's the Lucy, Lucy Live uh, window. So that's what it looks like. Um, when you open the audio I.O. window, it looks something like that. And here we can choose uh, what is going to be our input and output devices. So I'm going to try my input device as USB audio codec and my output device as the... Which one am I going to use today? I'm going to use headphones... No, I'm going to use the Mbox. Let's see what happens here. Mbox Mini. Okay. And now um, I will click demo again. Okay. Now I can activate the microphone. And what's you know kind of funny is out is what you would think of as in. Most time you think of the top meter as your input. But it says out because they're talking about what goes out to the other end. Hmm. And then everything's you, out. It's in again. Right. Then you got to choose what your connection uh, source is going to be. Your station. So you can see right here the station selected right now is Echo AAC. If I click on that, it pops up another window, and I've got just the ones that they come with that it comes with uh, pre-programmed in, and these are just Echo tests because I don't know anybody else with Lucy to test it with. So I'm just going to do it this way. So I'm going to choose uh, Echo AAC. Done. And I'm going to click broadcast, and we'll see what happens. So I'm click connect, click connect, click connect, click connect. And of course, we're getting a loop because I'm sending the audio back into the broadcast, creating a crazy loop. So what happens if I, I one one two two three 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 four 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 five 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 five? Yeah, it's just a limitation of my board. I can't do a, do a feed into it without looping right now. But mm -hmm. um, we trust it, you. Yeah, but it, it definitely works. It definitely works. And uh, I could change one thing that you and John won't be able to hear it anymore. But if I do this, it'll, everybody else will get a better demo. I'll change it to this audio device. Turn on the mic. Connect. Connect. One. One. Two. Two. Three. Three. So now I'm. So now I'm getting one getting single, one loop, single back. loop back. And, uh, and it's a lot uh, cleaner. It's a lot cleaner do you guys now. hear the? Do you guys back? hear the loop back? No, it's gone now. Right, you guys don't hear you it. You guys don't hear it. No. Um, um, but that's, but that's, that's what it sounds that's what like. It sounds like. <laughs> test, test, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, four, three five. four, five. Now, will this work over over, over Wi-Fi? Say if you're on an iPad or something like that, or your iPhone's on a, on a Wi-Fi? Yeah, I mean, what's not entirely clear to me is how much bandwidth it really requires, but it really obviously depends on what codec you choose. And there, mm -hmm. there are a lot of codec options that are available The setting in the settings. Um, if I go into my station selection click edit now i get this new window and within this window 
I can choose what format, and it's got a lot of them. MPEG-2, which is what ISDN, we all use in ISDN. AAC and HE, which is basically H AAC high efficiency. And then it's got these others I've never heard of called ULCC and ULCC24. Um, ULCC24 has one bitrate setting, 276K, which is a pretty high bitrate. But if mm. you've got a good internet connection, the sound quality on it is quite impressive. So this, I'll do that real quick. So this, so is, this the, is the check check. This is this the UUC codec. codec. It sounds, sounds pretty, pretty much identical, identical to what to I'm what sending, I'm sending out. out. And the and delay the del is minimal. minimal. Very, Very short, short delay. delay. So it's, so it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty good. Pretty so anyway, you know, the, it, it gives you a lot of options. You're not stuck with just one codec, so it's, there's some flexibility. But um, the reason some of you guys are maybe be confused, why are you hearing these echoes? I'm connecting to a server. And it's called an echo server. And its job is to, to do nothing but send whatever I'm sending out back to me. The whole point of it being is a way to test things. Um, you know that if you can hear what I'm sending out coming right back to me, that means everything works. The internet's working, the audio's working, everything has to be working for me to be able to hear myself coming back. So that's why I'm connecting on this Echo server that's being provided to me by Lucy so that I can test it out and demo it. Yeah, um, they have those They have those uh, Echo servers for Source Connect source is connect. one you can dial into. And, exactly. And, and actually, um, they have them for ISDN. Um, yeah, well, there's... Dave Emmer has them. Yeah, with, and with ISDN, there's also a way you can do your own loopback test where you dial into one line from the other. Correct. So you're connecting to yourself. So some people will do that as a method of testing. But uh, it's, it's just, it's a nice, simple, pretty simple interface. It's got a headphone volume control and a microphone volume. You can uh, choose to have zero latency or low latency monitoring, and uh, it's all built right in. But I love the little uh, TV antenna for broadcast. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a, you know it's a cool, pretty cool design. It's pretty slick. So you know we're yeah. looking forward to, to seeing this as a way to let you guys start being able to do sessions and literally have only an iPad or an iPhone with your Apogee mic or whatever device you want to bring with you. I have a question about that one second of uh, silence every 20 seconds. Yeah. Is that a second that interrupts your stream? Yeah. So that if yes. somebody was recording it at the other end, they could, they could cut the second of silence out? Or does it actually just blot you out? I, I wasn't going to say how easy it would be to circumvent their, uh, their uh, copy protection or whatever you call it. But it would be very easy that if you had the patience, you could actually probably manage to get through a whole session for free. And just wow. have that one second drop every twenty seconds. <laughs> yeah. In which case, oh, just, oh, oh, so that drop usually, is just yeah, a little protection. stopwatch on there. And it it, like, inter it like, interrupts the yeah, it interrupts the feed. <laughs> so every twenty seconds, there'd be one missing second of audio, which uh, for some people may not be all that abnormal for depending on how bad your connection is on Source Connect or ISDN. But um, if oh, it was Paul it. Harvey, <laughs> there would be plenty of time for his preg. Pause it. That's correct. <laughs> so anyway, we're looking forward to having a bridge set up with this in the near future so that those of you who do want to be able to try it while you're traveling, but you need to connect to an ISDN studio, you'll have it available to you. Um, outofhere.com is a bridging service that I actually built for one of my clients, and uh, we're going to have it hooked up in the near future. I've got a Comrex Access, which is a rack-mounted ISDN-type uh, codec that just uses the Internet. And Lucy will talk to that. So once that thing is online, racked up, and connected, uh, you'll be able to bridge right through out of here anytime using Lucy. That's Steve Napshin. That's Steve Napshin, yeah. And he could, he could bridge from Lucy to Source Connect, Lucy to Audio TX, Lucy to ISDN. It's all there. So pretty cool. I think it's going uh, to be pretty neat. All right. Well, so it, it looks like we'll have more choices in the future. More choices choice. are always good. Competition Cho is good. Choice is always the best thing. It's That's all right. about choices. That's right. Well, all right. Now you know all about Lucy. And as it gets the price, better, what was the price Tom Wall wants to know? Oh, yeah. It's uh, last time I looked on the website, which I'm looking at actually this particular second. If I click buy it's, online, it's like 400 bucks. It's isn't it? uh, the, uh, the Windows version and the Mac version. They're actually all of the versions for Mac, Windows, and desktop and android are all 249 euro 
So that ain't so bad. What's that? A little over three hundred bucks. I don't know what it's, the current exchange it's, rate is. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's All it's right. a it's a veritable bargain in comparison to what else is out there right now. I think. Pretty All cool. Right. We actually take a break right now because it's you know we got to get John has to go to bed eventually. You're right. Let's take so. a break. So <laughs> I looked down at you just right. <laughs> well, I, can't, I can't wait to see that on the deluxe. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll be right back here on East West Audio Body Shop with John Taylor. And of course, my tip of the week coming up soon. VO Studio Tech. Recording made simple. Hi, I'm Peter McHugh. This is Jim Tasker from Los Angeles, California. Hi, this is Bill Ratner in Los Angeles. Hi, this is Scott Rummel here in Yorba Linda, California. Hi, my name is Rick Wasserman. Hi, this is Tom Kane. Hi, my name is Vanessa Marshall. Hi, my name is Zurich. Hi, I'm Mary McKittrick. Randy Thomas chiming in. Hi, this is Joe Szymanski. Hey, this is Rick Robles. Hi, my name is John Patrick Armstrong. I was turned on to George by none other than Don LaFontaine, who always swore by his help. George is absolutely awesome. ISDN, Source Connect, Phone Patch, FTP, you name it, Georgia set it up. It's really the best thing I've ever done for myself. I feel free, safe, fearless, like anything is possible in here. Unless you like to look for opportunities to waste time, call George. And he did all of that long distance over the phone and the internet. I'm very happy with George and uh, I cherish him. Thanks, George. You make it easy. This is East West Audio Body Shop, where Dan and George don't speak geek. Well, not all the time. Maybe that got a, got a little geeky in that in that scene. Yeah, a little bit, you know. Was that sometimes. Elizabeth? It was. That was absolutely ah. Elizabeth. Ah, okay. She's cool. great. Yeah. We're thinking about Larry. Oh Larry yeah, Larry. Yes. Yeah, I so know. Yeah. Unfortunately, his his father passed away. Passed away on Friday, and so oh. we're uh, thinking about you, Larry. Yeah, He's a great guy. To- the Davis family. Great mm-hmm. guy. Great guy. Anyway, it's now time for, I said I'd never say it's now time for, because you're supposed to press the button and... You're supposed to be right on the, Johnny on the spot, I know. I know. And I'm doing it. It's not working. Well, we can all sing it then. There we go. Time for some announcement. I sort of heard it. They all heard it. Yeah. Why don't you guys go do the a little um, do the little Morse code thing? Go... Hello, Mr. and Mrs. American all ships at sea. It's time for the UFS announcements. Here's. <laughs> I should have been recording that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, actually, well, I'm recording we, that. We, you just did record it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yes, where were we? Save it for the future. Well, mm-hmm. announcements. Hey, you know, I did something today that I haven't done in 30 years, even though I do it every day. Are you back to stalking again? Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> don't tell anyone. I'm only telling the world here. No, I actually auditioned for 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 an for a musical again. Huh. A set, you know, and of course the accompanist doesn't show up. The music director comes in, and he sucks as an accompanist. Ouch. You know, so, and I was prepared and all that, and he started playing one key too high. And I'm like, oh, it's like don't start over again. But it actually went fairly well. And it was fun to audition for, for a musical again and have people who, you know, who have their own idea what they want to do. And you're walking in there and they go, who's this? Who's this schmo? And course, <laughs> actually, I knew them, so it didn't really matter. But anyway. What is the technical definition of schmo? Um, Does it have a direct I- translation? I have to go find my English Yiddish dictionary. It's here somewhere. Uh, Larry Curley and Moe's cousin. Right. <laughs> anyway, so what do we got in our announcements today? Well, I think you've got one, John. Yes, I do. This is uh, something that everybody should have on their calendar. If you can be out in L.A. Uh, Saturday, August 24th, 2013, this is the uh, third annual Texas Hold'em Poker Classic to benefit the Don LaFontaine voiceover lab. It is... Probably about the most fun voiceover event just for having fun. This isn't a workshop. This is just playing some cards and hanging out and uh, just just being with some of the coolest people in the voiceover industry. 
And it, of course, benefits the Don LaFontaine VoiceOver Lab, which, of course, George has been uh, a founding member and designer and builder of. And uh, one of the cool things is Joe Cipriano has uh, sort of uh, rallied a group of us that are in the Primetime Voices for Children. Uh, We do the uh, Christmas uh, CD and the Mm. visits to the hospital every year. And so we actually have a table uh, of players, Bob Bergen, Greg Chun, George Deloyo, Reno Romano, Kara Edwards, Townsend Coleman, Howard Kogan, and me. Uh, so we, I'm not going to sit at the table. So between now and then, I have to find a ringer because I, as you know, don't have a poker face. But uh, <laughs> I've, I've bought a seat, so I'm going to have to put an ass in it. You know what? Everybody's complaining that our picture and audio is way out of sync. And I can't tell on this end because everything looks okay, but... I do see that the meters on Ustream are not in sync with what we're sending down the line. So, just for the sake of everybody watching live, for your sanity... Close um, your eyes! No, yeah, yes. close your eyes. <laughs> which you should be doing anyway, because do you guys really want to look at us? When I um, do a session, I have the music stand blocking my face. I'm like... I'm, I'm, and the only time they see me is like a meerkat looking over the top, you know, for direction, because they're not paying for visual. And why That's would true. they? Look at this. Uh, but, you know, just for the heck of it, I'll stop the broadcast, I'll restart it, and see if that fixes this crazy delay you guys are seeing. Because I want it to be painless for you guys to watch... And then I'm going to have to edit the whole thing together later and clean it up anyway. So, do we we need to hear about your problems? Uh, yeah. Oy vey. <laughs> and now, back to East West Audio Body Shop, where every week it's Apollo 13. Yes, indeed. Yeah, we're for, we're not sure what exactly that was, but I guess it a was little Garage problem Band. with our with our with our audio processing. Yeah, that was actually not Ustream this time. That was GarageBand. There was some okay. kind of audio f- loop delay in GarageBand that was causing yeah. it. All I did was restart it, and we're back. Uh, back. Okay. In so are we are we in sync, folks? I'm in sync. I'm not sure about that. I'm in sync. But, okay. I think who I'm else in was sync in sync? Who else was in in sync? No, that wasn't uh, Justin Timber. T- Justin, Timber- <laughs> Justin Timberlake and somebody else, some other people, some other guys. He yeah. did okay for himself, that Justin guy. Oh, I hate him. He's so talented. So, dude, would you mind starting over with the poker classic uh, thing? Love to learn oh, all I don't about mind it. At we all. were we were I so mean, out just, of whack. Just everybody, just put it on your calendar and get there if you can. It's going to be August twenty fourth, um, and you can go to SAGFoundation dot org. Mm-hmm. And uh, that uh, has all the information for you. The third annual Texas Hold'em Poker Classic to benefit the Don LaFontaine VoiceOver Lab. It is going to be a lot of fun. And uh, we have a table of uh, the primetime voices for children, the more name dropping. Uh, we got Bob Bergen, Greg mm-hmm. Chun, George Loyal, Tony Coleman, Kara Edwards, Reno Romano, Howard Kogan. Uh, just to name a f- drop, Kogan. drop a few names. Cool, Sorry man. about that. I love Kogan, another one of my. One of my faves. One of my faves. Yeah, nice Neil guy. Wilson not going to be at that table. <laughs> but he asked me to drop his name. So there you go. You dropped okay. his name, but in a bad way. And you know what? If Neil really <laughs> wanted to, he would probably be, if he plays poker, a good person to take my seat because I don't want to play. But I bought a seat, and um, you know, because we just love the cause. Uh, but I want to be roving around with a microphone and a camera. If we can do that again, that's yeah, fun last I think yeah, we'll get to do that time. again this time, and you know, we maybe we can get the video that. released uh, within the next year. <clears throat> anyway, uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, what else is new? Well, let's see. Um, oh, you you want to know something? What this is our ninety eighth episode. Yeah, it is really ninety eighth episode. So in two weeks. It'll be our 100th episode. Actually, three Excellent weeks because we're going to go dark uh, for Father's Day. Oh, that's right. Right. oh we're going to go dark for Father's Day? So it actually, put it, then it really won't be until after I get back from Europe. Oh, right, right, right. Because it's because uh, you get back, the, that would be then July. The next show would be July what? July uh, 17th, something like that? Yeah, something like that. I'll be back on the 6th, So, okay. which I think is a Saturday. I was asking the wife. She's like, yeah, we're back on Saturday. Do your show on Sunday. Yeah, I'll only be, you know, six hours ahead. Mm-hmm, but, you know, mm-hmm. anyway. Yeah, everybody who's watching, you realize that these guys don't even talk when they're not on this show. So they're, they're like getting their schedule straight. <laughs> exactly. Talking about what he said to the wife. And we generally talk two days two days a week. We talk when we do the promo, and then we talk live on the show. But we, we, we catch up with each other time to time. We have meetings. You know, we try to make it feel yeah. like a real production with production meetings. Except tonight. Except tonight. Uh, um, <laughs> Actually, it's because Kath- no, Kathy, our producer, has been taking care of her mom in Buffalo, and... 
and uh, we it makes me realize now how much I've relied on her for the last year because when yeah. she was out of town I really dropped the ball on a lot of stuff so uh, well she's yeah. a better miss you, daughter Kathy. than yes. yeah she's a good daughter for doing that mm-hmm. lot like, again a lot of that going around mm-hmm. but anyway um, so uh, yeah so it, our 100th episode is coming up so we're trying to plan for that and if you'd like to give us a shout out if you'd like to do something to help us into our 200th episode you know March We'd love to hear from you so we can get you on for our 100th anniversary uh, special, which is coming up, I guess, July 17th. But we'll, <laughs> we'll take care of that. Do you mean I get Father's Day off? Yeah, I figured, you know what? We needed a day off. We've been really, you know, we've, we've had a heck of a run. It. And uh, yeah. what better day to take a night off than Father's Day? Absolutely. For both of us. Yeah. I'm, I keep getting, what do you want for Father's Day? I don't a vasectomy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I went. To, I went to the vet after number two. So, okay. Uh, I think the price goes up on Father's Day for a vasectomy. It, it, I, it probably does. <laughs> all righty. What else? Let's see. All right. So, send in your shout outs to us. I, I see you all there in the chat room. So, send us a shout out. You, you guys are all audio professionals. You know how to do this stuff. Just point a camera at yourself and say hi and how much you love the show or something really stupid, and we'll put it on. Do a selfie. You know what a selfie is? You hold the camera out like this in front of your face and you and you video yourself. Do it like your teens and your grandkids do it. Right. Get it out. And if you don't know, and if you don't know how. Ask them. Ask a younger person. Yeah. They know how to do it. Them youngins. <laughs> Have you guys played with Vine yet? Vine? Vine. No. Oh, Vine is great, man. Vine is a way to record these short little six-second long video snippets. Yeah, it freezes everything. on the most unflattering expressions. Yeah. On well, my could face. it possibly have fr- frozen on a worst <laughs> freeze frame ever? <laughs> No, the thing is, I was going to show you Vine on my phone, and it doesn't even have anything to do with the computer. I was just loading a screen on my phone, and then it crashed. You're a jinx, George. One of one of the people that's obsessed with Vine, Vine right now is Tara Strong. Mm-hmm. So if you have a Tara Strong, uh, what's the word? Um, I'm not going to say fetish, but if you really like Tara Strong, get she on Vine, like because she shot she she shoots a lot of them. Here's, here's one. Where she's at the vet, I think. She's taking her kid, dogs to the vet. And the thing is, she always does a voice to every animal Every animal you see on camera. She's mm-hmm. doing a voice for it all the time. And sometimes it's extremely hilarious. She has a good sense of humor. Yeah. Anyway, check out Vine. It's a lot of fun with yeah. your kids. Yeah. And okay. Yeah. Well, see, we're, this is the longest announcements in history. Well, you were going to ask me about the radio. Well, we'll get to it. Yeah, we were going to do that. But, you know, it's we got 20 minutes left with you, John. You know, I thought I would just make it you know last as long as humanly possible <laughs> you want to make it seem like an hour and, and a half okay. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly i'm trying to make it feel like two hours you know what That's other announcements do you have well Pray. let's see here yeah. let's see you have to like us on facebook now we, we we've been trying to shift everybody over to the other facebook page mm-hmm. see there's the east west audio body shop uh facebook <laughs> right. page right right mm-hmm. and then there's the ewabs group is it yeah we have a group okay so you can be on both, but if you want to be on the master, master invite list, so we remind you every week. Mm-hmm. And amazingly, you folks haven't like said, no, I don't want to, you know, yeah, I think it might be 10 people that likes it. I don't want to be on that list anymore. I'm like, well, pfft. yeah. All right. But uh, if you if you want to make sure you're reminded and get the latest announcements on the show and stuff like that, like, you know, we'll be dark this week. Right. Um, get, you know, get make sure you're, you're on our, our Facebook page, either the East West Audio Body Shop page or the eWebs group yeah, the group is really where a good place to go and just ask us questions and ask questions of the other people in our forum about right. your studio. It's, it's, it's been a great resource for a lot of people that go on there and ask questions about technical issues. Yeah. It's also also great is that, that Twisted Wave group that we've been participating in. Yeah, I've been in there a lot lately, too. Yeah. Which reminds me, I'm actually doing a webinar on Twisted Wave tomorrow night for the folks in Dallas. Right for, on. Uh, for Cliff... Uh, Cliff Zellman's uh, uh, Dallas meetup group, where I'm doing one for them tomorrow oh, night. Okay, cool. It's going to be amazing. Sounds great. And, yes, and then I then I have to do one on Tuesday night for our folks uh, who are going to be doing voiceover virtual on how to do presentations on voiceover virtual. <laughs> so uh, that's which reminds be fun. Me, I'll be there for we, that. Yes, we we have we have a spot to to that our our good friend Dave Quavassier is going to tell us all about it in just a couple of minutes. But now, John, we can ask you. Because you, you right after this, to- right after this short break. That's right.
And now back to the only webcast done with two cans, two geeks, and a string. East-West Audio Body Shop with George Winham on his end in the West and Dan Leonard in the East. And even farther east, we have John Taylor with us tonight. And uh, so, John, now you, you're, you're, you've been back in radio, what, about a year now? You went back, went way back east, even farther east than I am, as far east as you can almost go in the United States before you go to Bermuda, which isn't part of the United States. But, um, but you're, you're on the air in the mornings now, and what was that transition like? Now that you've had a, a year in retrospect, what's it been like? It's been, well, thank you. For that handoff, uh, Brady Martin style. Is that working? <laughs> yeah, you're on the Can wrong smack- side. You're facing oh, the wrong way. For wrong way. Turn the other way. <laughs> Let me smack Dan. Which way? I don't know how this works. <laughs> it's so confusing. Don't even try to think about it. <laughs> All right. So um, <laughs> the transition back to radio, which some people are doing now. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's actually kind of cool because I, I had to... Um, um, you know, figure out a way to get a health plan. Mm-hmm. And um, so I decided to, you know, go back into radio. Uh, a year and a half into it almost, um, it's great. Uh, I just kind of show up as me. And I have a great partner on the radio named Joe Rossetti. We've been friends for 25 years. And it is, uh, you know, loose and fun. And I don't know, we're just having a really good time. And so we have, uh, it's like classic hits in the morning. We play. You have plenty of music and we talk and um can your show we, be heard on the internet also do you guys stream yeah yeah cool 102.com cool uh, and it streams mm-hmm. uh and so one of the, the uh we have a very famous uh woman that listens to us and she calls in every now and then anyway she called a, a i don't know a couple of weeks ago and when we were going to a break I was touting my uh, partner on the radio, Joe Rossetti's amazing talent as a, a, a photographer. When he gets off the air, he's always at the beach or on the shore somewhere on Cape Cod taking amazing, you know, studio museum quality, you know, photos. He's really, mm. really good. He's got good equipment and he's, it's just an amazing talent. I have no talent. Uh, and, she, and this woman said, well, what do you do when you get off the radio? And I said, well, I go into my booth and I do voiceover for commercials and cartoons and promos and and uh, she said you do cartoons what what what's your cartoon voice i said well i do a bunny and she said do the bunny voice anyway i sent you the audio she chimed in and started doing the bunny and i want to see any anybody can guess who this woman is okay here she's, it is she's got an oscar a grammy a few grammys and many golden globes all right here you go everybody with a little bunny, bunny, bunny. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank Megan again. I will. Okay. I love lilacs and avocados. <laughs> Ukuleles and fireworks. Me a sorrow and walking through the snow. You got to know. You're the love of my life. You are the love of, of my life. life. You are the love of my life. You are the love of my life. From the moment I first saw you, the, the second, second that, that you, you were born, born, I knew that you, you were the, the love, love of my, my life. life. But simply the, the love of my life. life. <laughs> we're back. <laughs> All right. Wow. <laughs> and we have a guess. It was Glenn Close, says Steve. No, not oh. Glenn Close. Ooh, that's too gone. Now next. Um, Give us a good clue. Hmm. It's hard to tell over the phone. I mean, I sort of well, hear she, it. But... She was. She, she wrote that song, You Are the Love of My Life. Huh. Uh, Whoopi, Ann Richardson says Whoopi. No, Edith Bunker. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, Gene Libby Stapleton, Hall. yeah. Libby Hall, 148, dead Jing Bat. No, you're wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But a good guess. Thanks, Libby. Um, we'll let people keep guessing. No, no. good guesses. Good guesses. Um, I'll give you, she won an Academy Award for writing and singing a James Bond theme. Oh. Oh. Oh, that I don't was... know if she won the Academy Award for that, but she sang a James, wrote and sang a, ah, Steve Tardio, you got it. Carly. Carly, I was, I was, Carly, Carly Simon. Simon was just coming into my head. It's Whoa. Carly Simon. She lives over on Martha's Vineyard, and we're her, we're oh, her yes. morning show. And uh, so she started singing like the bunny with me. So I sent the tape 
uh, I sent the MP3 to uh, NBC Kids, uh-huh. uh, the producers of uh, the Chica Show. So <laughs> I said, hey, if you ever need a mommy for a Bungie the Bunny, I have a, an Academy Award winning, multiple Grammy and Golden Globe winning nominee. <laughs> you did, you did <laughs> so, her a solid, huh? Well, I think it would be just a hoot you know, yeah, to, absolutely. to work with you know, somebody that great. And uh, <laughs> yeah, she's just so awesome. Oh, man. And she yep. lives on the vineyard, Martha's Vineyard. And if you, everybody, we're we're back for the fourth restart of the show. Do you want to um, tell everybody what happened? <laughs> yeah, George, what happened? All right, I'll tell everybody again for people that watch the show regularly. I plugged my my Android <laughs> phone into the USB cable that's plugged into my computer, and when I do that, it immediately crashes Ustream. That happens on uh, all the time at NBC, CBS, ABC. Oh, I yeah. just wanted to. F- Charge my phone. That's all I wanted to do. Yeah. I wasn't futzing. Yeah, I was. What futzing. you expecting a call? Come on, you got a show to do for another forty minutes here. So, <laughs> <laughs> I know I am. I am a futzer. I need to put everything away. I have nothing on my table. <laughs> uh, anywho, time to clean up there. Anyway, we, we, oh, we were talking about Carly Simon. Carly. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. maybe I'll, maybe I got her a job. I don't know. Ooh, that would be so cool. You wouldn't yeah. hurt to give her a. You know, to but a you song. never know in this business. Mm-hmm. Um, and and um, when I was thinking about doing the uh, the radio show, um, Bo Weaver said to me um, a great piece of advice: said, "Don't think of it as as a a lesser pursuit. Hmm. Um, give them a, give them a, a dime for every nickel they spend on you." And he's right. You need to give whatever you do in in uh, in front of a microphone in any capacity, um, and even on the phone with a client or. Um, you know, speaking to a, a you know, class like you do, helping people and or talking to the local, uh, you know, Rotary Club uh, or Chamber of Commerce. If you've got, you know, want to talk about your business, you got to show up and try and give everything you've got every single time. Um, and you never know where things will lead. Um, we did this. Uh, I did this thing uh, this earlier this year that Paul Harvey um, and God made a voice actor video. Oh wow! And it was great. And um, oh, it was just a labor of love. It really was for me. And I didn't get any money for it. But you know what? I got called by one of the biggest uh, uh, managers of trailer uh, people, trailer voices, um, this past week because they had a client that wanted to do something Paul Harvey esque, and I was referred. And um, you never know. And I, so now I'm on the radar of this, this person. And, and that also came from uh, Larry Davis telling that major manager, oh, yeah, you need that? Well, you need to talk to John Taylor. And so it's, it, it's bringing your, trying to bring everything you've got to your relationships and what you do and what you put out. Um, mm. And it, you never know how things can, can come back to you. Um, and that's, to me, the secret to... A successful career, maybe not lucrative, <laughs> but but you know, just success in that you're just sort of happy with it, and it's organic, and everything that you do seems like it's it's worth worthwhile. Mm, maybe that's too. No, yes, I, you know, yep. you can be as airy fairy as you want. I, I I agree with that wholeheartedly. Oh, I know you do. We've been friends for a, a lot of years, and you know, you know, I know where your I know where your heart is. Your heart is in this, mm-hmm. and uh, and so you you get a lot back. And uh, sometimes you just don't know where it's how it's going to manifest itself. Yeah. But if you're putting out that energy, that's mm-hmm. that's your best or trying to, and yeah, it, it, it it works out. Um, this is a smokeless cigarette, by the way. Thank you for asking, Libby. And uh, I've been on those since. 2010 July. Speaking of things that charge over USB, exactly. I won't <laughs> plug it in; it'll crash the whole show. Exactly. Yeah, really, it'll be a blackout of all of Cape Cod. <laughs> Revolution. <laughs> plug this in. So, so, John, we we were talking before the show about you know software and stuff, what we're using, and you've you've actually you are an Adobe Audition user for a long time now, mm-hmm. um, on PC, and you yep. had an, you have an Android tablet too. But I happen mm-hmm. to know now, a little birdie told me, you're on a MacBook Pro. I am on a MacBook Pro. And what yes. was the... Uh, it went to the iPhone. What was, yes. the, what was the motivation to jumping to the Apple 
side of I, things. I think it was after like after like the fifth PC died. Hmm. Um, I, <laughs> I, I, I'd, I'd kind of made the um, determination that I was going to go to the Mac, mm-hmm. um, mainly because uh, of the fact that it doesn't get as bogged down with um, stuff. stuff. Sludge. That, that just sort of yeah, yeah. That just sort of ends up you know worming its way through the, the Windows operating system. And uh, and I like the way the Apple elegance of, of things works. And so I decided to get the MacBook Pro. And then I had to um, get the uh, Adobe software on it. And at that time, they hadn't gone to the cloud. But now they have the Adobe Creative Cloud. So instead of buying a, a, a Mac version of the software, they said, well, you know, we're doing this new thing. And now they've basically made it their entire business model. Yeah. Um, the Adobe Creative Cloud, the way it works is you pay a monthly fee and you are given um, access to every bit of software they have in the Creative Cloud. Except wow. for Lightroom, but everything else. Okay, except for mm-hmm. Lightroom. Mm-hmm. And I don't even know what Lightroom is, but... It means you get Photoshop. It means you get Adobe Premiere, which Premier, is, yeah. Right, or, which yeah, is yeah. excellent. Like the uh, yeah. the Paul Harvey piece that I did for YouTube, I got, I did that on Premiere, and I learned Premiere that morning when I put it together. Nice. Uh, <laughs> and beca- because the support uh, you get with the cloud is great, and you yeah. you know don't know how to do something, tons you of tutorials, it, right? And there's a video that shows you step by step. It's really pretty amazing. And so um, I'm not terribly happy with the um, the user interface um, and um, the workflow um, of uh, Adobe Audition Creative Suite CS6. or Creative Cloud. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I've stuck with it and I just figure I'll just stay doing work on that and yeah. not go back to the other. What did you, you get used to it? What was the big do. thing? What was the big thing going from you were going you were you're on uh, Adobe Audition PC. 3, right? Before? Yeah. What was yeah. the big thing? I mean, there was probably many, but what was the biggest thing that you were like, "Ugh, what happened to that? Why did they change that?" Um, well, I think it had to do with Windows and Mac. Uh, you know, working working it in in Windows and Mac. In, oh, okay. in Windows, in Windows, you could open up a folder that had twenty five, thirty, fifty sound effects, and you just sort of hover over one of them, and it would play. Uh, now you gotta now you gotta click on it, and you gotta preview it, uh-huh. and you know things like that. They just bog Little your things. workflow down. Yeah. yeah, and it just it just works so much faster on the fly. I'm doing production as well. So I'm doing imaging for the radio station. Oh. I do all of the, the imaging and the imaging voice for that. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm slower than I'd like to be on it, but I think mm-hmm. it'll, it'll catch up. Somebody um, asked, uh, should they stay on 5.5? Well, honestly, what features were lost when they, when, when they transitioned from three to mm-hmm. create a suite are still gone in five. They're, they're gone in 5.5 and they added some of them back in version six. Yes, but six, not yes. All. and one 6. of them is, five is coming out now. Well, six. Well, either whatever you have, if you're on the uh, creative uh, cloud, you're you're getting every update of every software that they have. Yeah, You'll you get can the get latest and greatest. You can get the creative cloud and get everything, or you can do what I'm doing right now, and I'm just getting um, Adobe Audition for 19.95 a month or something like that. Only that one program. And uh, and somebody said you have to be online. Well, yeah, you do have to be online to get access to it to log into the server. But I think you can continue using it for up to thirty days before it has to phone home again. Hmm. And then after thirty days, your computer has to be connected to the internet at some point for it to check in. Um, but, but people don't know this, but Adobe Adobe has been doing this for years anyway. Mm-hmm. Like it's always been connected to the internet. It's always yep. been phoning home. Now it's just a little bit more out in the open, you know. Now they're saying, "Well, it's called the Creative Cloud," and they're they're, they're making it more obvious. But the the full blown version that you, where you get everything except Lightroom, which is a photography thing, is uh, fifty bucks a month. Yeah, I get it right? for twenty nine ninety nine for a year. Sweet, that's a, that's be, a deal. Because I was upgrading, I was already an owner of you know. Yeah, um, CS uh, five. Yeah, but um, the the features that were missing from the transition, um, mm-hmm. one of the major ones. I loved the auto heal right down there on the, on the favorites drop down menu. It was the first thing mm-hmm. pl- plugged in there. Auto heal would take a breath out. You could clap in the middle of a sentence, and you could hover heal over it, and then hit auto heal, and it would go away. But that's um, not there anymore. It is there. Oh of yeah, course yeah, it's yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's there on uh, six and higher. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it, you know, it is what it is. I, I like the software, and I also like the ability that if, if, if 
I want to make a video. I have an excellent video editing software. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, Full blown. That, integrate, that integrates perfectly with it. It does. It does. Um, and also, you know, Photoshop, that's a great, great program, which I know nothing about, but I'd like to learn some of these things. That's a, there's entire conferences that do nothing but teach and talk about Photoshop. Photoshop. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Tom asked, do you like the time stretch compression feature? Of course I do. And I also like the fact that you can do it in a multi-track environment where you can yep. sel select 12, 15, or as many little um, tracks, and then you can compress all of them as in one, yeah, one swell foop. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> It is Absolutely. pretty cool. I, I, I've felt pretty psyched that I was able to figure out a way to, because one thing about Twist Away that I've been a real big proponent of is the stacks feature. Mm -hmm. And I love that I could create a stack, send somebody this little three kilobyte file, and they have the same settings. But I couldn't figure out how to do that with Adobe Audition for the longest time. By the uh, way, Neil, I, Neil I Wilson how. is a big, Neil Wilson's a big fan of the stacks. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Neil. We, we work a lot together. Um, Drop the, his uh, name again. The <laughs> good job, um, but the workaround I figured out is a little is a little nugget is that I can send you a, a CS uh, whatever's the name of the file a ses session yep. file. Session yep. The file, session yeah. file will have the the mastering rack settings wrapped into it. Mm -hmm. So when you open up that same session file, you get that same mastering rack with all the settings. Then all you have to do is save that rack in your rack, and now you right. have the settings. I just yeah, figured that out setting. a couple months ago, and I thought it was that changed changed a lot of things for me. I mean, and just now an, I can an, set people up so fast. And I think it's an SSX file. I think that, what do they call it? SCSX, I think. Yeah. 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 So, and yeah. now here's, here's something out there too, and then somebody can probably answer this. Um, there now the SES files were just the session files for your Adobe Audition or or even you know uh, what was it before? It was like it's like the PTF of Pro Tools. It's just the it's the session file that keeps a, track of all file. the wave right. files. Right, and but the 3.0s is where those SES stopped. Uh huh. And then they turned into SESX. Right. Yeah. Now there's a there's somebody has a third party software that converts the SES to the SESX. So if you have old sessions. Uh, from 3.0. I don't know if that works, but somebody has, there's a, a downloadable. Okay. Uh, For those of you wondering what we're talking about, if you do a lot of production work, if you're, you're making commercials, mm -hmm. you're adding music, you're doing sound effects, you need to know some of this stuff. But it takes years to learn it, like John and George and I have used most of our lives learning this stuff. Yeah, John's using it pretty much daily. Daily, now, right? daily, you know. But I tell you, I love Twisted Wave. Have you started we, playing with it? Oh yeah, yeah. I I grab I grab stuff off the internet using sound. Uh, what is that called? Day? No, what is it? SoundCloud. No, uh, not sound. A uh, Soundflower. Soundflower, right? Which um, basically takes everything that's played sound-wise out of your computer and allows you to use it. Uh, you know, to input then record it, as, it, right? And then record it. And yeah. I, so I I use my um, I use my uh, Twisted Wave to record through Soundflower. Sometimes, uh, even you know, like I'll listen to trailers that other people are doing because mm -hmm. I want to, you know, practice. I'll um, record them and 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 I have usually about once a week. I have four or five, six trailers that I listen to just to be on that edge of like what's selling right now. It's a good idea. I, I had a client send me a video clip that he'd cut together himself. It was basically a trailer where he voiced himself over the trailer. So it's a mm -hmm. little goofy to listen to, but you know, it's a good training tool, yeah. you know, to hear yourself mixed in with all that music and see what it mm -hmm. what it takes to be to fit into that yeah. uh, that that style and uh, everything. And there's a I, lot of trailers out there too that should have voiceover, but yeah, don't. That's happen that's a trend right now, isn't it? And sometimes they just have the words on the screen and there's a lot you less know, voiceover on trailer. If you're going to practice uh, yeah, it seems like, you know... I mean, like, it's good for I, practicing, but it's bad for the voice actors who make yeah, a living yeah. doing trailers. Well, maybe not. You know, you think about Jim Tasker. If Jim Tasker, all he has to do is say, rated PG-13 in IMAX 3D in theaters now. He gets paid Done. the same, doesn't he? Yes, he does. That's true. Spot in a tag. That's that, yeah. John, that's that Joe Cipriano thing. Caviar. Where, uh, should I get the caviar? Dan Sotan's <laughs> like, Joey, it's a spot in a tag. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All righty. Well, I can see you're starting to fall asleep. Dude, dude. I got to let John go. Yeah. Because yep, the alarm you, you, goes off in five hours. Oh, geez. And if you're not sharp tomorrow, you can blame us. And they'll go, who the hell are you talking about? Anyway. Hey, well, I want to thank you guys for having me over. It was a lot of fun. 
Thanks, it's man. always fun having you on, John. And, and uh, we'll- as a tribute to Neil Wilson, <laughs> he'll drop his name again. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that, you guys. John takes yes. that seriously. Yes. John Taylor, everybody. We'll have him on right. again soon. We'll see you guys. Good Thanks night. a lot, John. Good night. Have a good night, John. We'll be right back after yeah, this. We will. <laughs> VoiceOver Extra, the voiceover industry's online news, education, and resource center 24-7. Hundreds, probably thousands of free how-to articles for voiceover success, ranging from home studio to voice acting to business. A free voiceover industry directory, calendar of industry events, resource links, a store, and much more. Bi-monthly webinars on all topics of voiceover, free subscriptions to newsletters, reports, announcements, daily news, and features at voiceoverextra.com. Welcome back to eWebs. We were expecting you, but we still didn't bake a cake. Here's Dan and George. Hey, we're back. Oh, yeah. We're going to throw Corvo in here right now? Are we? I think so. All right, let's do it. Is All it right. calling? No, yeah, well, yes. It's. I. I looks like we're on, but the quality's like really crappy, but... Uh, that's just from my end. Maybe there's some. No, it's it's Skype. Out. You know how Skype is when you first oh, now connect. We're, now we're catching up. Now we're fine. Yeah, okay. when you first connect, anyway, Skype has this, to catch here's up. A special announcement from Dave Cravassier. Right away, Dave. Hi, I'm Dave Cravassier. You know, these days to get anything accomplished in your voiceover business, you've got to spend some time online. We audition online. We share with others in online communities. Maybe you've even done some online training along the way. So here's the next big thing. It's called voiceover virtual. It's this giant two-day online voiceover conference that's coming to you this September. And because it's online, you can attend and participate from anywhere on your computer. Wait a minute, I know what you're saying. An online voiceover conference? How does that work? Well, it works pretty well, actually. There will be training with dozens of the industry's top professionals. You'll find an innovative and interactive exhibit hall with some exclusive bargains. You can have private online meetings with agents and casting professionals and trainers even get your demo evaluated. There will be plenty of chances to network with your colleagues, even make some new friends social media style. Pretty cool, right? Well, as your virtual MC, I'll be telling you more in the weeks to come about this amazing event produced by your friends at VoiceOver Extra with the help of some of the industry's top pros. Right now, why not just take a moment to check out this website and learn more? And if you want to get the lowest possible price on all this, check out the VO Virtual special offer at the registration button. See you in September online, okay? All righty. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. VoiceOver Virtual will be there. I'm taking big part in this. And I think you're going to be there, too. I think we're going to actually do a show from there. Might be an interesting part. So everyone's yeah. like, how do you do a conference virtually? Well, go and find out. Yeah. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, it should be pretty fun. Yeah, it's, lots it's, of, the best people in the business are going to be talking at this. Mm-hmm. I mean, think about what we do here live, you know, what we do on the show live. It's going to be some of that going on with a whole bunch of like tons and tons of content that we've provided um, by some of the best in the business, including Absolutely. some interesting stuff where we have a pro on pro interviews. Um, I'm actually producing that segment and or at least recording it. And uh, uh, that should be pretty cool. We're going to have, you know, one pro interviewing another pro face to face virtually on Skype. Should be sort cool. of like like the actors' workshop, mm-hmm. Or mm-hmm. the actors' studio with James Lipton. Oh, what yes. an interesting fellow he is. He, he is. <laughs> um, see, now I don't have John here to play off of anymore. But anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah. Speaking of the best in the business, segue in transition. For those of you learning how to do this, Harlan Hogan. Harlan Hogan. Harlan Hogan and Voiceover Essentials. That's got right. all the best stuff in voiceover you can like you can go in the forums and go oh yeah i gotta have one of th- and i gotta have one of these and you know and i've got to have one of these and i you know and i gotta have one of these right. well you don't necessarily have to have one of those 
Unless, of course, you need one of those. But most of the time, keep it simple. And Harlan keeps it simple by making it the stuff that you need available that he thinks is the best. And since he's the best, it must be the best. It yeah. just makes sense, doesn't it? Exactly. Exactly. I mean, you know, it cut. It just cuts through the shaft, you know? It's like... Cuts it, through the shaft? Is that the word I'm looking for? Not I, shaft. Uh, cuts to the quick. Cuts to the quick. <laughs> you know, me and my... Uh, Butchered colloquialisms make the show that much more entertaining. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, but it cuts to the chase. You know, if if you are starting out and you're thinking about what's that next uh, microphone or what's the audio interface I should check out, go to VoiceOverEssentials.com. Take a look at what Harlan's offering on there, and if it's something he's selling, it's guaranteed it's going to work well for voiceover use. You know, it's that's the point. He, he's selling things that you guys need. You don't need everything he has, but he has the things that you need. All in one place. Makes it and really And if you easy. think you need it, you can find it there. Exactly. He yeah. has he has access to all sorts of stuff, but his specific product lines, like the Porta Booth Plus and the Porta Booth Pro, and the ABS thing that holds your your boom stand in place in case you have a really heavy microphone yes. on. Yes, and this clever voiceover recording sign. So you can hang this thing up in the hallway, hook it up to a remote control power switch like this one that he also saves. You can buy both of them together for 85 bucks and just hang it up in the in the corridor outside your studio so you can get the kids to be quiet and say yep. i'm on re i'm recording instead of having to yell you just push the button that's right so cool anyway, stuff voiceoveressentials.com go there buy his stuff tell him we sent you we would appreciate it and so would he so thanks that's again right. harlan he's been thank with you. us since the beginning good guy and will continue to be so he's sticking around thank you harlan well so, you know, we haven't gotten more tip of the week yet. Yeah, I know. Whatever happened? No, we wanted to get Probably John. We wanted to get as much John time in as we could before. All right. So let's go to our tip of the week. You got it. All right. Ninety percent of the quality of your home voiceover studio's audio is dependent on the acoustics of the area in which you recorded. One of the worst enemies in any room is what we call room reflection or slapback. The problems I experience with many of my home studio consultation clients is a lack of knowledge as to exactly what room reflection sounds like, and even if that reflection is occurring at all. There's a couple of reasons for this. Every room is different in size, configuration, what the walls are made of, and just as important, how loud you talk. But let's look into what it is that is not acceptable and why you may not hear it. Here's an extreme example. A hard room with hard surfaces. There's no mistaking the sound of your voice bouncing off of tile. Like a mirror, it sends back almost everything you say and then repeats the process because it doesn't absorb sound at all. And it just keeps reflecting all the sound waves. Can you hear what kind of a room I'm in now? It's a well-furnished, larger room. But you can tell that, can't you? What about this room? Yeah, it's got a pretty unique sound to it. Not a great place to record. Or here. You hear how softer objects tend to lessen room reflection a whole lot? What about in a closet? Well, sometimes closets can cause this type of a sound. If you're like under a shelf or under your desk. So if you listen properly, you can literally hear what room you're in. But why can't you sometimes tell what things actually sound like? Because you may be recording in an acoustically dead space, but listening in a very lively space. Or listening on regular computer speakers or laptop speakers, which can't handle the frequency response necessary to hear it. So learn to hear those types of reflection. None of them are good for your audio. If you have studio monitors, make sure the room is acoustically neutral and as dead as the space you recorded in. Or if you're wearing headphones, you should be able to discern how big the room is. And you know something? If you can, it's not right. And that's my tip of the week.
Boy, Frank and Mike was in that picture. Boy. Oh, Frank and Mike. We miss you. Fra- yeah, Frank and Mike's in an envelope in a drawer here. He fell and had a little accident, so I've got to... He needs to be resurrected. It's alive! <laughs> borrow some other parts, get some more glue. So you were, anyway. using, uh, you were using Studio Suit in your closet studio at that point when we did that video. That's right, yeah. And uh, and it's still doing great. People are buying it off the shelves. Of course, I don't have it on the shelves. i got to go make more. I've got to go in, into the warehouse and actually cut this stuff up and take it over to the tent. This is custom-made stuff, folks. Yeah. This isn't like mass-produced stuff that's like, you know, slap a label on it, slap a label on it, you know, and send it out. This is made with love. Absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm absolutely cutting. I'm making these individually for people. And, 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 but as we saw last week with the installation you did, now we, now we heard from some, now your client last week who said the, the, um, the client, the actual publisher, yeah. loved the sound of it. I know. I, that, was the, that was a great endorsement. I mean, it's great to hear a satisfied client who's a voice actor, voice actor but when their client says it as well that's always really encouraging and in that particular yeah. case with this client he didn't buy anything it was actually the publisher that bought all the stuff from me so that i could go set it up for him you know so that was a that was a really encouraging uh, little bit of uh, information for us you know total totally by accident i come across this stuff it will now take the voiceover world by storm mm-hmm. hopefully it won't blow away in a storm but it it, <laughs> it will keep you warm in the same time it also works as a rescue blanket did i tell you that <laughs> so you oh. can carry it around in your car and it's, it's perfect anyway, i had a, i had a, even a couple small pieces you sent me too like little two by three yep. pieces and i had a, i was just glad that you sent them because i was doing another funky closet conversion uh in a in a little tiny rental house yep. and uh i was just glad I, I was glad i had him in the car because i between that and some blankets and whatever the lady the lady could find around the house i threw those up in two really you know important critical areas one over a window and one yep. over a big shelf that was right behind the mic and boy it really 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 helped just having those two little pieces you know somebody challenged me this week yeah, I won't say I won't say I won't say who it was, Bob Leach, but it was he was like he was saying that, uh, you know, can you make like a porta booth out of studio suit? Well, as you can see, using my my mustache tape. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, I, I actually I love to tinker and make stuff. I'm like, how do I create something that's going to be stiff enough to hold this up and make it like like, a you know, you know, not that the, not that it's better than a porta booth, but, you know, it's you know certainly flatter. Uh, how do, well does this work? You know, if you just take a couple of pieces and have the right hinges on it and stuff like that. Listen how dead it makes it in here just doing that. Of course, oh, yeah. you can't see me, but but you can hear the difference. You know, it, I mean, this is this is a pretty good sized room as it is, but I do have yeah. acoustic panels in here. But do you that, can do hear that in a bathroom good. sometime. I think it'd be yeah, pretty that, that's amazing. Yeah, that's the next promo for Studio Suit. It's going to be in the bathroom. How did you stiffen it up to make it freestanding? I didn't. I missed that. Just yeah. just using layers of tape. Uh, well, no, the, la- the layers of tape hold it on. Yeah. But I actually was putting it through through the uh, through the seams in here. Oh, I but, see. Uh, but the, I, I had to find something stiff enough. So you know yeah. what I found? What's that? Uh, you know when the painters come to your house and they stick a sign in your front lawn painted by so and so has these really stiff metal rods in it. It's perfect. Oh yeah. Well, Devox said uh, I recorded from the bedroom, so I assume that the bed and open closet with lots of clothes is a big help. Yeah. Well, oh, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. But That's, you could buy a studio suit and hang it in there with your clothes. Yeah, so, or or if you have a closet that has very little clothing and just a bunch of boxes and junk, this helps a lot. Um yeah, I, I one of my favorite things to do is like a client of mine will have a mic set up on a desk or the mic stand set up in the middle of the room and I'll say, All you gotta do is just let's open up the closet. Oh gee, it's full of clothes. How what do you know? Stick the mic in there and have them stand in front of the closet, and it's amazing what a difference that makes with uh, without buying a thing. Um, yep. And then Studio Suit is a great backdrop. You can hang it on um, one of those uh, those uh, Oriental folding screens. Yep, they make really good freestanding uh, racks to hold that stuff. Or a shower curtain, or in oh, your case, curtain. nails. Yeah, that's right. I just put it up with nails. A couple of some big old like sixteen penny. Whatever they're huge finishing nails, tink 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 into the stud and boom, that thing was up in about one hour. Incredibly versatile stuff, totally mm-hmm. by accident. Anyway, go, go buy some studio suit. Anyway, you can go to vostudiosuit.com. Gee, do I have to pay for that ad now? Nah. 
Okay, good. You play, you pay for it. Believe me. Yeah, tell um, me about it. <laughs> All so right, so I, was, I just thought I would see if there's any more questions. I was just asking people in the chat room if they have any questions for us before before we uh, we wrap. So that's uh, where that question from Devox came from. Sylvia asks, uh, "I record in my office and I have a small corner with Oral X to record. Do I need something behind me to keep the sound from bouncing off the walls?" Yes, you do. Generally, yeah. I mean, yeah, we, it, we'd have to hear it to know for sure, but uh, yeah, it generally helps a lot. Yeah, you know it's it's interesting, and we and we keep saying every room is different. You never know what, what what's. It's sort of like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Mm-hmm. Um, it's 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 very simple. You 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 need absorption in front of you, but in order to really prevent the room from showing its size, you really do have to have something behind you. Sometimes we throw a duvet over over something behind you. Yeah. But if you have studio suit in the back wall or something like that, it does it does a lot. Uh, you don't have to be in an totally enclosed space, but if you are, if you have absorption on on most sides, then you're going to be in much better shape. Yeah, it's it's a lot cheaper to dampen down an area around you than trying to dampen the entire room. You know, because if you do leave the room completely untreated, you'd have to use a lot more absorption uh, on all the surfaces in the room. So just you know, make the room smaller around you by free hanging some of the stuff on homemade pvc pipe frames or whatever you got around garment racks work pretty well yeah you know. i should i we, we did something here in town so a, a lovely gal uh, from uh, from san francisco is back here taking care of her mother everybody's coming back to buffalo to take care of their their parents everybody's from buffalo it's a great place I, to be from apparently so <laughs> uh and she's right around the corner and we built uh, uh, a um a PVC cube in her basement. Actually, her and her father did. Uh-huh. And and I brought over some studio suit. Sounds fabulous. Yeah, it really does. It really does a really nice job. Um, Devox said, how would you mount the studio suit onto the ceiling? I think the key with studio suit is those metal grommets that are already yep. um, on the studio suit. Um, I would use some heavy-duty anchors that, you know, if you can't find the studs, now, just like a wall, you should really find the... Uh, um, joists in the ceiling, right? So you can go right into those. But um, if, if you don't, just use a really good toggle bolt, something with a really heavy anchor to support it. Um, and then you can use, um, you know, the, I, you know, those hooks that are just sort of like an L shape. It just makes mm-hmm. a right, right ninety degree bend. Right, right. I think those would make it pretty easy. Yeah. Also, a, a sliding track. That's I- really clever. The sliding track. Yeah, it's at that it's and because there you can just move it out of the way mm-hmm. and it's you know it's sort of like a voting booth or a shower curtain or something like that. Yeah, it works great. And and I and I know a couple of people have done it. In the first install we did in Chicago, uh, we we used that track and I've been using that too. And that's that's a really neat thing to do. And you can use a shower curtain too. That's the the, the grommets and the ties. Yeah. It's just so incredibly versatile. It's versatile. Yeah. Where, where do you? What's your supplier for the uh, slider? Uh, it's up. in Chicago. I can't. I couldn't find them here in Buffalo. But if you go to a medical supply place or a place that has, um, ah. you know, because that's what they use in hospitals for okay. privacy curtains, the same track. Okay. Good idea. Yeah. We'll look that up. Add it to yeah. the website someplace where people can find I it. I need to c- get a deal with somebody and put it on my website. So. Sure. Absolutely. It's it's a brilliant, brilliant idea. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, I think, uh, you know, I don't have any really... Uh, Super whiz bang tips of the week. I think Lucy, I kind of, that was my big one for the week. That yep. that that I think is going to be um, pretty revolutionary. I already have a few clients who are chomping at the bit to be able to start trying to use this as their uh, as at least their road rig. You know, an iPhone with uh, an Apogee mic, or uh, I think one of the best audio interfaces out there right now for the money is that little iTrack Solo. In fact, uh, thanks to <laughs> thanks to Roy. He had to send me this email saying, it's the stupid deal of the day from Musician's Friend. And I was like, oh, you had to send me that link. So I had to buy it because <laughs> it was 99 bucks with free shipping. So you, It's a great little game. I, I snagged one, so I'll have one next week to, to play around with. But not only that, it will also work as a regular USB interface, too, like the 2i2. No, yeah, absolutely. This is not a one-trick pony. Uh, yeah, iOS, no. any USB, anything that'll work with USB. It'll probably work with an Android phone, too, with the new uh, recording software that's come yep. out called USB Recording Pro yep. uh, for Android. Um, but that's everything uh, you need. Yeah, it's cool. But if you really want super compact and you like the idea of it being completely battery-powered, um, 
There, there's the Apogee One, the new Apogee One, the new Apogee One which for, is for for iPad, not an iPhone. Quite a bit more. It's about hundred bucks more than the old one, but it runs on batteries if you need to. Um, and then there's also the iAudio Interface Two, rolls off the tongue, right? From uh, Audio, ooh, Audio Control, I think it is. Anyway, right. IAI Two. That one is right. the one that I think uh, Bo Weaver mentioned a few last year. Right. And uh, does it have a metal case? Which one, Devox? Mentioning 24 bit. I know they record 24 bit. I don't know about the metal case. I think they all have metal cases, the ones I'm talking about, though. Right. Um, but anyway, I, I like the, the iTrack Solo my, my, the best, though. It has no proprietary funky connectors, just the iPad uh, sync cable. That's it. Right. Well, you do have to plug it in, though. Well, yeah, that's the thing is it needs USB power, but you can get these little USB batteries. I think I have one really. You have one close by? Really close by. Yeah, actually, here's one. Um, I haven't charged this in a year and a half because I haven't used it for a long time because I got a bigger one. That's more capacity. But anyway, this is just a USB lithium rechargeable battery. Um, So you could throw this in your bag. It charges by USB like a phone would, and Mm -hmm. then it has two USB ports to power things so all you need is this and the usb cable that comes with it and now you have a truly portable uh wow. battery powered system these batteries can be had on uh amazon ebay for 30 40 bucks something like that so Boy, and, and i remember seeing the t- you know the the picture phone at the new york world's fair in 1965 and thinking that was so cool yeah <laughs> you weren't yeah. even thought of then kiddo i wish i was though i really wish i was around for the world's fair that was, a, that was a great one. The closest thing we have now is this thing called Maker Fair. Look it up. There's like three okay. or four of them around the country. Really cool. I mean, it's just regular people making really, really cool stuff at home. You know, from anything from battleships that shoot BBs at each other to uh, Vandy Graph generators and spark, you know, shows based around electricity. Everything you can imagine. Robotics. Uh, right. it's, it is really fun. Really cool. And those yeah. guys that do the Mentos powered water cannons you know where they drop (laughs) mentos candies into a two liter bottle they come every year and they do a huge show with like 500 bottles of soda well it's sort of like the fountain at the the bellagio it's like the fountain of the bellagio (laughs) with diet soda it's hilarious (laughs) it is so cool but uh i love going to that whenever i can i just missed it it was uh in the bay area last month but anyway okay hey and i think think we're out of time here yeah i think they'll do it I think that wraps it up rather nicely. Yes, We're going to end early tonight, and maybe we'll continue <laughs> to end a little bit earlier as the summer rolls We're on. Tighten so you guys things can, up, folks. We're going to try and tighten it up. Mm-hmm. Tonight was kind of loose, but we had a few technical issues. Yeah, exactly. One of our one of them caused by us. We won't say who. Um, <laughs> it's always me. Uh, yeah, always you'll notice me. things are always perfect from this end. Oh yeah, no problem. All you have to do is run Skype. Not so bad. <laughs> Skype yeah, is getting better. I mean, I we badmouth Skype a lot, but the last few shows, the quality from your feed to me is fantastic. Your video quality looks every bit as good as mine. You could never, you can't tell you're on the other end of a, a, a connection. So, yay Skype! You know what? I'll give you, I'll give you props where it's due. It's Skype's yeah. working real well lately. So it has. Yeah. Well, most of the time. <laughs> most of the time. It, it worked. It worked well on Mother's Day. Well, you know, we used to have so many problems when we had a second caller on, like with John tonight. Right. And then the previous show uh, guests, it's been working great lately. So uh, great. thank great. you, Skype. So you Skype. And if you aren't, what century are you living in? I Every week I teach somebody how to use Skype, I think. They're, and they're all like, wow! <laughs> I have tried Uvu, um, but the audio quality wasn't up to Skype, believe it or not. It was not. Mm. FaceTime and Uvu and all the other ones, the audio quality it doesn't match uh, what Skype can do right now. So we're we're gonna we're gonna see changes of this in the next year or so too. It's it's oh, it's yeah. just an amazing evolution in how we do these things. Absolutely. And when it happens, we'll be here to tell you about it. And, or we'll be using it both or both or, and or both. <laughs> we'll be telling you about it as we use it. That's right. Anyway, all righty. Well, that's gonna do it for this week. We sh- we're we're off next week. Yeah, we're going to go dark. We're going to take a weekend for ourselves and our families. Yes. We'll and, be greatly appreciated. Yeah. yeah. And we'd like, of course, like to th- we have lots of people to thank before we head out here. Um, because without them, this show would not be possible, of course. Uh, our wonderful wives. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Marcy. <laughs> she, was actually, she was actually in that last video. 
If you, maybe <laughs> you noticed she was lying in bed there. Um, of course, Kathy Curran, who will be back at her regular post hopefully soon, and uh, you know, and best wishes to her and and all the stuff that she's dealing with right now. Uh, Anthony Gettig, who wasn't here tonight, but he'll be back with us. And uh, of course, Jason Lawson and Lee Penny for other production assistance, and of course, Larry Hudson and Sylvia McClure, Larry Davis and Elizabeth, Rosemary Benson for the. Uh, for the bumpers and drops that I never hear, but apparently everybody else hears. <laughs> so I'll work on that, Dan. Okay, all right, we'll, we'll get it right eventually. And uh, and I'd like to thank you, George, for not panicking while things you know, fall in this fall show to the floor. Doing a live cast is great practice for learning to not panic. That's you know, right. That's why airline pilots are the coolest customers on the planet. That's why I think they make such great voice actors. And we know one particular. We, we a do know one fan yeah. of the show that is an airline pilot. It is uh, good practice, you know, for uh, remaining calm under pressure. But it's a lot of fun. Thank you, Dan. Oh, well, right. Anyway, I'm Dan Leonard in the East, and I'm George Whittem in the West, and together we are East East West West Audio Audio Body Body Shop. Shop. We're back in two weeks, folks. Have yourselves a good one. Take care, everybody.